This example is from the text Conceptual Dynamics. Specifically, this is example problem 9.3-9. .9. The problem statement reads, a 0.45 kilogram soccer ball rolls to a player with a velocity of three meters per second in the direction shown in the figure before being kicked by the player. After the ball is kicked, it moves in the direction shown with a velocity of 10 meters per second. If the ball is in contact with the player's foot for 0.10 seconds, determine the magnitude and direction of the average force exerted by the player during the kick. So we read the problem. We have this picture to help us understand what's going on. We attempt to identify the information that's given in the problem and the information we're attempting to find. So we're told that the mass of the soccer ball is 0.45 kilograms. We're told the initial velocity is 3 meters per second. specifically in the direction shown. So here we can see that the initial velocity is in the negative x direction. So in the negative i direction with units of meters per second. We are also told the velocity of the ball after it is kicked. And so here in this figure, we can see that it's 10 meters per second and this is the direction where theta is 50 degrees. And so we can imagine that that vector can be broken up into an x component and a y component. So that angle is 50 degrees. And so the side of the triangle that's adjacent to the 50 degrees is the x component in the positive i direction. So 10 cosine 50 degrees and the positive i. And then the y component is the side of the right triangle opposite the 50 degree angle. And so we'll use sine and it's in the direction of positive j. Again, with units of meters per second. We're also told that the ball is in contact with the player's foot for 0 0.10 seconds. And ultimately, we're asked to determine the magnitude and direction of the average force exerted by the player during the kick. So we can imagine we have some vector force. We want to find its magnitude as well as its direction. Here we have a picture. If we go a step further and draw the free body diagram, we can imagine that the only force acting on the ball in the plane of its motion is the, is the force of the foot kicking the ball. There are other forces, uh, the weight and the normal force, which are out of the plane of motion. And so they're not relevant to determining F average. We could also imagine that there's friction as the ball rolls along the grass. But during the 0 0.10 seconds of the kicking, that friction force will be very small compared to the applied force F average. Moving to the next slide, we can go ahead and complete the solution of this problem. So here we've repeated the information that was given in the problem. We still have our figure drawing in the force that we're considering that we're attempting to find is F average, the force of the shoe kicking the ball. Um, so ultimately, we're trying to find this vector force. Uh, in particular, we're trying to find its magnitude and its direction. Looking at what we're given and what we're trying to find, in essence, we have a situation where um, we have a force acting over an interval of time, as well as a change in velocity. And so this problem is well suited to an impulse momentum approach. Because impulse momentum captures the effect of a force acting over time, where the impulse momentum relationship is that 
a force acting over a time is equal to the change in linear momentum okay one of the things to notice is that this is a vector relationship and so what we can do is we can solve it in terms of its components specifically in the x direction and the y direction so we have that the force in the x direction acts over some time and it's equal to the change in linear momentum in the x direction so it's mass times it, the x component of its velocity after the kick minus the mass times the x component of the velocity prior to the kick. And so looking at this, we have everything we need. Um, we know the mass, we know the velocities, we know the change in time, and what we're trying to find is the, is the applied force. Since the force is constant, we can basically bring it out of the out of the integral and we just get that the impulse in the x direction is the force times the change in time therefore the x component of the average force is equal to the mass times the change in the x component of the velocity divided by the change in time so the mass is 0 0.45 kilograms. The x component of the velocity after the kick is 10 cosine 50 degrees. The velocity in the x direction prior to the kick is minus 3. So we subtract the negative 3. Those have units of meters per second. And we divide by the change in time, 0 0.10 seconds. We punch that into our calculator, and that works out to be approximately 42.4. We have kilograms times meters per second per second, which is a kilogram meter per second squared, which is in Newton. For the y direction, it's exactly analogous. So we have the impulse in the y direction equals the change in linear momentum in the y direction mass times the y component of the velocity after the kick subtracting the mass times the y component of the velocity prior to the kick again we're solving for the average force so we can treat it as constant solving for the y component we have the mass multiplying the change in the y component of the velocity divided by delta t. We plug in numbers, 0.45 kilograms. Following the kick, this is the y component of the velocity, 10 times sine of 50 degrees. Prior to the kick, there is no component in the y direction, so that's simply zero divided by 0 0.10 seconds. Punch that into our calculator. That works out to be approximately 34.5 Newtons. If we were just trying to find the average force as a vector, then we're done. This is the x component. This is the y component. Specifically, we're asked for magnitude and direction. So to find the magnitude of the average force we simply take the x component, 42.4 newtons, square it, add it to the y component, 34.5 newtons, square it. Then from that sum, we take the square root. So in essence, we're applying the Pythagorean theorem. You know, this is has some y component, some x component. The magnitude is the hypotenuse of that right triangle and so we punch that into our calculator we get that the magnitude of the force is approximately 54.6 newtons 
if we want to find the angle, I'll call this beta. We have the adjacent side and the opposite side, so we can use the inverse tangent. So the opposite side is the x component, 42.4 newtons. The adjacent side is the y component, which is 34.5 newtons. We punch that into our calculator, and we get that that angle is approximately 50.9 degrees. And so that brings us to the conclusion of this example.